when we even talk about soul, self, spirit, and so on, we are actually conditioned by theological interpretations of those things. So it would be wonderful in a perfect world if we could look at these words, you see, without those, without that baggage. But given that we can't and we just have to use those terms, then the only thing I could say is that the soul has been presented to us as if it's something we're given at the time of birth. This is all over the world. Religion, you're born as a human being and you have that spark of God and you can lose your soul. Right? If, you, if you don't do the right stuff, you're, you, you know, he's lost his soul or this person. And even I use those, you know, we, we slip into this, we, we use these types of terms. Actually, we're not even really right at all. The psychologist Thomas Saas said it in one sentence. He said, the soul is not something that you find or that you have been given. It is something that you create. Once you truly understand this principle, the whole perception of yourself and your life and your purpose on this life and your relationships with other people will fundamentally change for the better. Even though it sounds as heretical as you could get. But we need to grow up. The human race needs to now wake up and grow up and, and, and get it. Because the world is moving already. You're going to get this whether you like it or not. These concepts are going to be taught to us through you know, being dragged or, be, or you can accept it. But if you accept that the soul is something you are creating and you are the sole creator of it and you create it in what we call life through experience, a different kind of gratitude, a different kind of reverence arises. And also what arises, well, it helps us with that whole thing of separating ourselves from the crowd, which I said was important earlier. That's one of the things that will really help you do that. And secondly, what it really means is that no one else can really help contribute to that. Because, of course, that person has to deal with developing their soul, which is different from yours. So immediately you've broken this consensus trance. You may look to other people as guides, as I do. I've got my heroes, I've got my you know, mentors. But I realize that they're guides. The teaching doesn't belong to them. They, have, they can't territorialize it. You know, but they may present an aspect of the teaching, you see. Just like, you know, the facets of a diamond, you know, f reflect different aspects of light. So, that's okay, that, that's fine. They're presenting their cuisine in a different way, you know. And, and uh, but never lose sight of the fact that you are in the very process of, of creating your soul. And the agonies that you feel, and the sorrows, and the feelings of loss, and the euphoria that you feel, and the ecstatic, and the peak experiences, and the relationship that you have with music, and with animals, and nature, and human beings, all of this is you taking that lump of clay that was given to you and trying to turn it into this beautiful thing of your own creation. What most people have done, it just underlines what we've been talking about, is they go, oh, I can't be bothered with all that, getting the hands dirty. I'll stand back and bring in an expert. He's a good sculptor, let him try it. Or, hey, mate, can you do it? And they go, oh, sure. And everyone is modeling everybody else's clay. And that's the pigsty that we're in right now. Nobody is doing every So what you basically have is this hideous, abstract thing, ready for the New York Metropolitan uh, Museum of Art, by the way. Some hideous monstrosity, like something out of Alien, the movie, uh, of this, you know, distorted, multifaceted, you know, papier mache thing that's got everybody's stamp on it. You know, I pointed out at the conference that there's this logo downtown that says, I am what I am because of everyone. It's on some you know, corporate logo. This is what is being pushed. And basically, we can collude in that by saying, oh, that's just too much work, all that shadow work, soul work. Oh, do you, you know, let the religious priest do it. Let, let, let me be guided by a strict set of fixed codes and that I have a fixed heaven waiting for me. I have, I have a, a, a savior that can be accepted by all. Or no, I'm an atheist, a scientist, I deal in facts. <laughs> Even though philosophers like David Hume have said the entire basis of, of science, which is causality, is utterly a hypothetical construct of the mind. Right? But we don't want to mention that, right? So, you know, this process of leaving other people in control, abdicating your own control, and then everybody doing it to everyone, is where we are now. They call it multiculturalism, global diversity, you know, they've got all these wonderful terms for it. And it's all based, as I said, as was the Calvinist model, as is this Pavlovian behaviorist model, as is most religious models, including Scientology and Masonry and all the things that you're seeing in the world, all the things we try to deal with in our work. It's all to drag you away from selfhood. And I've decided in my work to start talking about this because otherwise you're just a basher. You're just, hey, Michael, you know, you critique this, you critique that, you know, and a lot of people do this. And it's fine. It has its, it has its place. 
But very importantly, you have to start saying, you know, I'm pointing out the deconstructive stuff here that you need to be aware of, but you have to sort of offer something in, 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 in to replace that. Yeah. That's a very crucial aspect of this. Otherwise, it sort of becomes just uh, finger pointing, yeah, which is which is only about 50% of the problem. Yeah.